leaders refuse to go in this Bible to give you the solution. But right now, today, that time is up. There's no more giving you lies. We're not African. We're not black. We're not Jamaican. We're not from the 12 tribes of Israel. We're not judging you, we're ready. What have we seen any change? No. Have we seen anything that has changed our people? Changed our neighborhood? Glenn J. Dante, right? What's your name, brother? Dave. James. James? Dave. Oh, Dave. Oh, sorry about that, Dave. All right. Shalom. Shalom, brothers. The reason why the, the, office, the soldiers going over this is we have to understand, right? We've been, any of y'all been in church? Grow up in the church? Yeah. You're a church member, right? Yeah. Well, how about you? Did you grow up in the church? Like, from when you was little? No, they never. Your auntie, mama, uh, some, nobody forced you to go to church? Okay, but I'm saying that they, they bring you to church. They force you to go. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That, that's what I'm talking about. No, no, no. How about you? Your, your family force you to go to church? Yeah. Like like Easter or something like that, or, or New Year's or something. They don't force you to go. Nah, that's this new generation now. You can't take tell them and take them nowhere. You know, I'm just messing with you, Dante. But the reason why the, the soldiers going over what he's going over is because give me Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Give me that real quick. You have to understand that we've been taught lies for a very long time, even in the schools that we that we uh, are, are brought up in, right? Nope. Do they teach you about your history, that you're an Israelite? No. What kind of history do they teach you? Do they, do they even teach you history? <laughs> yeah, they teach you history. Whose history? Bring it up. White people history. Nope. Bring it up. So that's why you got to understand, we've been taught something for a very long time. And it's been so ingrained that now when the truth comes, it sometimes is hard to let go of what we've been taught. Because sometimes our grandmothers, our mothers, our, our, the people that we love are the same ones who also help to push the lot. Because their, their mothers, their fathers, they, they did the same thing to them. So that's why we have to do this. Read what you got. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Yeah. And be not conformed to this world. Not being conformed to this world is when you understand now that something is a little bit off with the way our people are being treated. Definitely. Right? You see in like, okay, we live in, do you all live here in Riviera Beach? Okay. Right, real close by, right? You got churches all over the place over here, right? But would you say this is a good neighborhood? Like a neighborhood that you could leave your front door open at night and go to sleep? Absolutely not, right? What'd you say, Dante? Would you leave your front door open? <laughs> Absolutely, with all these churches out here, Bring it up. right? So we gotta understand, read that one more time. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 uh -huh. and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So now we have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. How do you get transformed by the renewing of your mind? You gotta be washed in the word of God. Right. You gotta be in this book right. because you'll be taught God loves everybody. Is that what you were, is that what you were taught? God loves everybody. But then when you go into the Bible, you start reading things like this. Hold on, give me Matthew chapter 15 and verse 24. You, and you start wondering to yourself, like, hold on, I'm reading the Bible. And I'm reading something that's not really saying the same thing. Excuse me. It's not saying the same thing that my pastor was talking about. Right. Something's wrong. Right? Come on. Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent. This is Christ speaking, right? But unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He said to the whole world. Of the house of Israel. That's so right. he's now, he's, he's showing our people in the word plain. I'm not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right? Get, hold that. Give me Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 6. Because it says the lost sheep of, of the house of Israel. What you say? Glenn, Jay, Dante, Dave. Would you say the people that live in the ghettos and the slums or, or the, because you mentioned before about we being in the bottom, right? Would you say that these people are lost? Yeah. What about you, Dante? You don't think so? Or what about you, Jay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. 
What about you, guy? Not all is lost. Not all is lost. Okay. All right, let me show you something. Read what you got. Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 6. My people have been lost sheep. God says that his people, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, the Israelites, are lost sheep. Now, we, we take God's word as the penultimate. Basically, God's word is above all. So we believe that God's saying that his people are truly lost. You know how you can tell our people are lost? When we go to the, to the what is it, the precincts, or we go to the libraries and try to vote for people that we believe are going to change the way our society is. Are going to change the way our neighborhoods are. We go and we vote every single year. And I'm not right, or every two years, every four years. Right? We start looking at these people and thinking that, okay, they're going to come into the neighborhood and they're going to change everything. Does anything change? Bring it out. Nothing changes. But we still look to them to see if we can have change. We still look to them to vote for them and tell them, okay, since you're, we're going to put you in power, you make the changes. Right. Same thing with the churches. Same thing with the churches. Right. The churches, we have right down the street right here, there's probably about eight churches in a small vicinity. Right. Right? All of these churches, but at the same time, right off the corners of right off the back streets of all of these churches, there's a dope hole. Right. Right. There's a there's a uh, there's a crack house. Right. Right. There's there's prostitution going on. Right. There's all kinds of craziness going on in these neighborhoods. That's that's a lost people, especially when the men of the neighborhood can't say, listen, you can't come on this block and serve dope. Right. You can't come on this block and, and uh, prostitute yourself. Right. You gotta take that somewhere else, not right. in my neighborhood. Right. That's a lot. We wait for the police to do that. Right. Or we wait for the pastors to, to actually come out the church to tell the people that. That'll never happen. Right. You know? That's a lost people. Right. Come on. Jim, right. you understand that, Dante? That's what makes our people lost. You play football, play, play sports? Basketball, right? Our people try to play sports. LeBron James, uh, uh, Kevin Durant, Kobe. All of these brothers, they have the understanding, they have the money, they have the status to gain the information to find out who they are, who their people really are, and to help them in any way they possibly can. But for the most part, do you see the majority of them doing that? A lot of them come from down here. A lot of them come from down in Florida, right. South Florida. Right. But you don't see them coming out here trying to do something in terms of uh, uh, putting together programs so that you can keep brothers like yourself off the streets and out of the hands of the police. Right. Right? That's a lost people. Because we really look to them to be, because they're our icons, our idols. We look to them like, they, they got to be able to do something for us, right? He just got a $90 million contract. He must be able to come back and help us out somehow. Right. Never works. It never happens. Read me. Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 6. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. The shepherds are the leaders. Right. The so-called pastors, the priests, the reverends, the, the politicians, the presidents. All of these people have come into our neighborhoods and said, we're going to do something to make a change. And every 25 years, the neighborhood just gets worse and worse. Right. right. Wow. The police cars get better looking. Bring it out. They become newer. They cleaner. Wow. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, the young men, they get left out. They get left out. The, what was that? Uh, Martin Luther King Day parade? Where we were out here, there's a whole bunch of young people out here. Right. Right? And when they all left out here, the whole place was filled with trash. That's because you have older men who aren't willing to come out to these young men and say, listen, this is your neighborhood. This belongs to you too. You live here. All this trash that you see out here, just clean it up. Get it off the road. So that our neighborhood can look good. But it's our neighborhoods that you go in, you can tell immediately you in the hood. You look around, it's trash all over the place. And then as soon as you cross the street, you in a good neighborhood, there's no trash. Green grass, no weeds. You understand? Right. This is what we try to tell our, tell our people. That's a lost people. That's a people who don't have an identity. Because with that identity, with an understanding of who you are, you hold each other accountable for everything that you do. You, you, Brother Glenn, as an older brother, if you see Brother Jay and the Mrs. Cindy, you know he's a married man. And you see him out on the, on the streets with another woman. You'll be able to tell his brother, listen, you know that ain't right. You got a wife at home, bro. You got children, man. You can't be doing that, man. You know what God, you know what God says about that? You can put, be put to death for that. Come on, man. Think about your children. Think about your kids. Think about what you're doing for the most high. You, Jay, 
being able to tell a young man like this, listen, man, you think that them, them sports and all that is going to get you where you need to go. But the only way you're going to re really learn how to become a man is by applying the commandments of God. Right. And when you see him going off, you should, be, you should have no problem saying, hey, little bro, you need to fall back. You need to chill. And you, Jay, you need to be able to understand that through this word, you need to be able to humble yourself to greater men. Right. To men of understanding. To older men, to the elders. But we've lost all of that. We have Now we have no heritage to be able to come back and claim it and say, this is what we need to do. Right? right? Is that it? Is that it on first six? Go back to 15, Matthew 15. That's why Christ says this. Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay. Because it's only us that need saving. Right. It's only these brothers and sisters that's out here in the hoods, whether it be Riviera Beach, Miami, Chicago, LA. Our people are the ones that need help. Right. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, the Israelites. That's who needs saving. That's who needs a savior. Right. That's why when we give you and ask you a question like, who is this person? Uh-oh. Right? Almost like and you say, well, that's, that's, that's Jesus. I mean, y'all might not have said it, but y'all said, okay, well, that's what they show as Jesus. But that's the same thing that they would allow you to believe so that you could continue believing on a lie. Right. Because there's nobody like that that's going to come back to save you. Right. Think, okay, put it like this. Is there, y'all live here in, in Riviera Beach, right? Uh, Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale, too. How many times have you seen nothing but white people flood the streets and march for black on black crime or Hispanic on Hispanic crime. In one time they've done it. So how would then, if you've never seen that, with your own eyes, how could you believe that somebody like this could come and save you? How could you believe that? Read what you got. Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So the house of Israel is you, brothers. From the oldest to the youngest, you are the Israelites according to the Bible. You That's are God's right. chosen people. Right. That's who Christ is coming back to save. Right. You see the things happening on the news where it be World War III about to pop off? That's going to happen. Right. The same way we came here on slave ships, same way we came here on slave ships and that was prophesied to us, the same way it's prophesied that World War III would come. Right. But it's coming so that Christ can usher in his, his, savior, his saving grace to you. Right. So that he can save you. He's going to destroy this place and set up a kingdom for y'all. Right. How many of y'all, let me ask you, Dante, how many times you've ever been anywhere and you've been able to tell somebody, hey, listen, um, I need you to take, take my book bag, take these clothes, wash my clothes, make sure everything in my book bag is brand new and spanking, uh, make sure my chain's shining good, and then bring it back to me in 24 hours. Have you ever been able to do that? You know why? Give me Re Revelations chapter 2. You know what I want? Revelations 2, 25. Let me show you something about the kingdom of heaven. About the kingdom of God. It's going to be right here on this planet. Not in the sky somewhere. That's another lie that they teach you. To make you believe that you have to die in order for you to get the in order for you to get what belongs to you from the beginning of time. That's rulership. Check this out. Listen good, Dante. Revelation chapter 2, verse 25. You know. But that which ye have already heard, fast till I come. What, what we teach is to keep the commandments. Right. The Israelites must keep the commandments for them to be able to be saved by Christ and for them to get the kingdom that's promised to them. Right? That's what you hold fast to. Whatever's written in the Bible. Right? Verse 26. And he that overcometh. He that overcomes what? What? Like, what does he have to overcome? What do you got to overcome? Okay. Ah, I'm glad you say that. So what do you got to overcome? You, 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 you just said it. Sin. You got to overcome the sin. But the sin that's in you, not the sin that's in them. The sin that's in you. The sin that's in Jay. You got you to gotta, you gotta overcome that sin. You too, Dante. You got you to gotta first learn what sin is to be able to overcome it. Right? Come on. Verse 26. 
and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. You understand what that means? Right now, there's a nation that has power over you. Right. You run a red light, you get a ticket for it. Right. If you hungry as hell, and you wind up stealing something to feed yourself, you're going to jail for it. Right. Because there's a nation over you that says, listen, as long as we're in power, you're going to be subservient to us. Right. You're going to serve us. So read that last part again. Verse 26, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. So it's literally telling you, if you can overcome your sins, Glenn, Dante, if you can learn what sin is and overcome those sins, you will be able to rule this entire world. Now, some, I'm going to tell you right now, even for us who believe it and teach it, Sometimes it's kind of hard to, to see. Right. So imagine for you brothers who've never really heard this the way you're hearing it today, that you gonna rule the earth? You think you can, you think you can rule the earth right now? No, right? How about you, Jay? Glenn, no? So what do you have to do to get it? Bring it up. That's the question you gotta ask yourself. What do I have to do to get it? Or even this, right? Because a lot of times this is what we hear. Well, well you know, Maybe I wasn't, I wasn't born to rule the world. That's not what God says. That's not what God says. A whole lot, give me, uh, here's uh, Genesis 32, 28. Genesis chapter 32, verse 28. If we can get that too. Give me that. Bring it up. Genesis chapter 32, verse 28. Bring it up. We, we out here saying Israel, Israel, Israel. Y'all the Israelites, you're the children of God. What does that even mean? Listen. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, which is our forefather, who's the father of these 12 sons, right? Israel, come on. But Israel, Israel. for as a prince. Now I was gonna tell you what Israel means, read. For as a prince, prince, has the power. That has power. With God. With God. That's literally what Israel means. You are a prince of the power of God. Right. So literally, literally what you are, as gods. Right. You're literally children of God. Bring it out. But that's the thing. We look at it and we're like, uh, I don't know. I'm just I'm just a nigga. I'm, I'm just a Hispanic. I'm just I'm, I'm just an American. Right. We don't see what God has been telling us from the beginning. Right. You would lose your heritage and your identity and your name simply for breaking God's commandments. Right. Simply for not keeping the Sabbath. Simply for committing adultery, jumping from woman to woman, selling dope. That's the things that would separate us from that understanding right there. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, 
Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.